Hi, my name is Bill Schaefer with some more ideas for VFX production. Today we have a debate on B splines versus Bezier curves. And basically, I'll be talking about why I prefer Bezier curves over B splines. There's not necessarily a correct answer. Different applications may favor different types of solutions. One of the favorite arguments I've heard for B splines is that they're better for organic materials, such as trees, plants, bushes, any flowing cloth, anything that's blowing in the breeze or gently moving, like real life objects. That may be. However, I have a few problems with B splines. I've noticed that 90% or more of the artists I work with that have a lot of experience, years of experience, prefer Bezier curves. The vast majority of artists I've worked with prefer to use Bezier curves almost exclusively. And this is in Nuke, Combustion, Silhouette, Mocha. As I mentioned, I found a few problems with B splines, and this makes me prefer Bezier curves almost exclusively. First of all, it's very difficult to make a sharp corner with a B spline. It requires three points. To make a sharp corner, an angular corner that has a pointy point, you need one point for the point and then two more points to choke it in or squeeze it in. And this is a real drawback to B splines. With a Bezier curve, you just take a point and you make it a cusp. You make the handles zero and you got your point. Bing, it's right there. So if you're dealing with a complicated object that's very angular, it will take a lot more points with B splines than it will with Bezier curves to accurately rotoscope the contour of that object. This is a big problem with B splines for me working quickly. You need three points to make a sharp corner. One point with Bezier curves seems much more efficient. Also, Another big problem with B splines is you cannot add points while you are rotoscoping. Now, if you're working on an extremely long shot with very complicated objects like billowing fabric or a tree that's rotating in parallax or smoke or flames or anything that's very complicated, you probably will need to add points during the duration of the shot. Now, if you add a point on a Bezier curve, it does not change all your previous keyframes. They stay unchanged, and the point is added in all the previous keyframes. However, if you add a point in a B spline, your previous keyframes are all changed. That's because the point's influence on the curve acts beyond the points next to it. And therefore, this is a big drawback for me in the way I work with B splines. I like to keep the points to a minimum. And I start with as few as points as possible and only add them when they're absolutely necessary. And this technique is impossible to use with B splines. You can only do it with Bezier curves. With B splines, you have to guess how many points you're going to need ahead of time. Because if you add a point, you may destroy many, many, many saved keyframes. To me, this is a big drawback to B splines. For extremely long, extremely complicated shots, Bezier curves are more reliable. Another thing that I don't like about B-splines, and this may be just a personal preference, is the points in a B-spline don't sit on the curve. 
So in a complicated shot, I may not know which points go with which part of the curve. And sometimes it's difficult to sort it all out. Now I'm used to using Bezier's and I'm more used to using Bezier's. So I'm used to looking on the curve for the point on the curve. And I prefer to work with the points all on the curve. It seems to be more straightforward and more direct as far as to how the points are affecting how the shot and how the shape is moving. Also, a big drawback to me with beast blinds is straight lines. And this is similar to corners. It's almost mathematically impossible to make a straight line with a closed beast blind shape. It's always going to have a little bit of curvature. Now you can hide it through tricky manipulations at the endpoints by adding extra points at the endpoints, but why bother? If you make a polygonal shape with a Bezier curve and all the nodes of that shape are cusps, have no handles, then it's a straight line polygonal shape. Straight lines are easy with Bezier curves. They're trivial. You have to work to make a straight line with a beast blind. And in most scenes, most urban environments have lots of straight lines. You will be masking and tracking a lot of objects that have straight lines. Boxes and cubes and rooms and buildings and desks and tables and books and on and on and on. Why use a tool that it's difficult to make a straight line when a Bezier curve can make a perfect straight line, a mathematically perfect straight line, trivially. This is a big problem with beast blinds, in my opinion. You cannot make a straight line. You can only approximate a straight line. Another problem I have with beast blinds is that the influence of a single point goes beyond the neighboring points. Because you're influencing it like this, you're changing the curve all the way through all the points. And by modifying the curve to fix one area, you can change the area next to it unwittingly. And to make one change, you frequently have to compensate with two or three changes. Now, I'm more used to using Bezier curves, and I prefer how they work, so this might be something that you unconsciously learn. But for me, a Bezier curve is nice because the point in the Bezier curve only affects the section of curve between the two neighboring points. The influence of this point does not go beyond the neighboring points. So it's easier to specifically select a section of the curve and modify just that section of the curve. Again, this is something that I prefer with Bezier curves over beast blinds. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Part of the reason that many people that prefer beast blinds don't like Bezier curves is because of the handles. Because it takes a long time to set all the handles on the Bezier curve. Well, let me show you a little trick. And I'll tell you a trick. And if you go to your software package and try it, you'll get over that problem really quickly. I know this is possible to do in both Mocha and Nuke. I don't think that Silhouette has all the options to do this. But here's the trick. Say we're in Nuke, you open a Roto Paint node, you make your shape. What you do is you place the points at the place you think you're going to need them on the shape. On the outer parts of the curves and on the little sharp pockets, the indentation and the points, and the middle of curves. And you place as few points as you need, but you put them in the right place. But don't worry about the handles. Don't worry about the handles at all. So then you close your shape, you have a pretty good approximation, but the points are all exactly on the curve. Then you take, you select all the points on the curve, and you make them all smooth. You select all the points on your Bezier curve and make them smooth. Now look at your curve. 
in some parts where you need a sharp indentation or a sharp point, it'll be too rounded. Change all these points to cusps. Basically make the handles zero length. Now look at your shape again. You'll find your shape has a 95 to 97 percent good match on the object you're trying to mask. And it's just taking you an instant to do it. In the little bit where the curve is off, either add another point or pull out the handles a little bit to more closely match the curve. With time, with Bezier curves, building shapes takes no time at all. You just go outline, throw all the points down, boom, 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 boom. Outline all the points, make them all smooth, make the few that you know need to be cusps, turn those into cusps, adjust the handles a little bit, and you're there. You're done. And when you're animating the shape, you have to try and first select the whole shape, use the deform tool. I know Silhouette and Mocha have a deform tool. And make the shape fit as close as possible, then grab groups of points and move the groups of points into place. And at the very end, you should only move an individual point. But if you're a good roto artist, you can animate a shape with almost never moving any points at all, just by using the deform shape and grabbing groups of points on the side. And the advantage to grabbing groups of points or using the whole shape is you keep the same relative orientation between the points. So you get a much smoother animation for the duration of the shot. The industry is now filled with many talented, intelligent, and hardworking people. The software changes and improves at an amazing rate. I'm sure some of my comments will elicit some very strong response. And I welcome the debate it will bring in order to find best methodologies to rotoscope. Thank you and leave your comments below.